Hello and welcome back to another short tutorial on NFTX V3. Uh, last time we took a look at buying and selling on the marketplace. Now, the reason that buying and selling on the marketplace is possible is because of liquidity providers. Uh, every time someone buys and sells in the marketplace, there is a small fee applied to a vault which allows providers of the liquidity to earn both AMM fees as well as earning vault fees, which now get paid out in ETH instead of the V token. So how do you become a liquidity provider? Well, let's go back to our profile and we can have a look at our balances. And we're going to come down to our Azukis. Uh, we can see we have 10 Azukis at the moment, and there is one vault that we can jump in, which is currently paying around 67% APR and has had a reasonable volume over the last seven days for a test net. So we, uh, we can also see here that we have 10 NFTs, the approximate value of those. Um, and then we can see there are two liquidity providers for that vault. We can also jump in and see more about that vault. If we go to the collections, have a look at Azuki, we can go onto the info tab. Uh, and here we can see the price history over time. Uh, we can see what's been happening recently. We can see this vault. Uh, we can see the top stakers in here. So there's only one staker. We can see that there are two pools, both a 0.3% pool and a 1% pool. Uh, and just a note on this, the 1% pool allows you to earn 1% fees on the AMM, uh, but the 0.3% pool allows you only 0.3% fees on the AMM. However, the 0.3% pool is the only pool that will earn fees from the vaults. So when you buy and sell an item from the vault, a vault fee is placed on it, and those fees are all distributed to liquidity and inventory providers on the 0.3% pool. The 1% pool will not get the vault fees, but they will still get the AMM fees. That's how you can have a little bit more of a look. We can click into the 0.3% pool as well, and we can get taken across to the pool section. Uh, we can see how many tokens are locked against how much worth. We can see the current pool, uh, well, the current positions that are applied and the ticks or the, uh, the lower and the upper ranges for the liquidity. And we can see some transactions that have occurred in the past as well. So let's go back to our profile because we're going to be adding some liquidity. So if we go into Azuki again, we come back here and instead of saying uh, sell, we're going to deposit our NFTs. Now at this point, we get to decide what kind of position we can make. So we are going to pair NFTs, um, but we can make an ETH only pool or we can make an NFT only pool. Uh, an NFT only pool is a pool that has a range starting above the current price and going much further above the current price. And an ETH only pool is a pool that starts its price just below the current price as the upper range and the lower range is much lower. So this is for ETH only, this is for NFT only. So we are gonna say a pair, and then we have the option of what fee tier. So we can go to advanced options, we can create a 1% pool if we wanted to, but like we said, only the 0.3% pool receives NFTX vault rewards, so we are going to choose that one. Uh, we're going to pick the ones that we want, so I'm just going to pick the five. And again, this is a new collection, so this is being minted. Uh, and on Sepolia, it takes a little while for the metadata to be indexed and pulled through. On mainnet, most of the collections you'll be working with will have already minted out. The metadata will already be there, uh, so this won't be a long-term issue. But you would want to be able to potentially uh, filter by your traits or see the ones that you're choosing. So we're going to say next. And this gives us an overview of what the current ticks are. So this is the current liquidity. Uh, and this is where the liquidity is going in for us. Um, the pool price gets set by default. Uh, this is what the TWAP value of the 0.3% pool is. So this is what we're basing our calculations from. And in NFT XV3, it's as similar to or the same as UniV3 in that you can create concentrated ranges. So unlike Sushi, 
uh, and V2, with NFTX V2, you are providing liquidity across every price range. Uh, here, you specifically pick your price ranges. So for us, we are going to go, yeah, like this, minus 50 and 500% with five of our tokens. That requires us to pair it with 1.14 uh, ETH. Um, if we change this, so if we say we want this, so we've already said that we're putting five in. So if we say we want to change this to four, then we'll have to put less ETH in. And because we said we were going to put five in in the previous step, we're now adding four to liquidity and one gets sent to inventory. So remember that 80% of all the vault fees go to liquidity providers and 20% of the vault fees go to inventory providers. So it still makes sense to have some inventory as part of your positions so that you can pick up those additional fees as well. So we are going to create a couple of positions. This one we're going to start with. So reasonably wide and we're putting in sort of half of our Azuki bags. So we're putting five in. We say next. And this lets us know that there's some going into inventory which get locked for 48 hours whereas our uh, liquidity position doesn't get locked for as long as it gets locked for a, a few minutes. Let's say create position, and we need to approve that NFTX can use our NFTs. There we go, that is done, and we can go and view our position if we want to. Um, we're actually gonna create a couple of layers of concentrated liquidity here. So rather than just have one position, we're gonna have one which is reasonably wide, which is uh, the one that we just created with our largest amount of NFTs. Now we're gonna create a another one, and they're gonna pair it again. Um, I'm gonna to stick to the 0.3% pool again, and this time I'm gonna pick three of the NFTs. And we can see here, this is the slightly, so we can see this is our additional liquidity that has been added now. This time I'm going a bit tighter, so minus 25 to 250. So it's a slightly tighter range than what we had before. Uh, so I think it will go down, like I'm allowing the price to go down by at least 25% and I'm still gonna be in range. Once it goes lower than that, then the position will stop being used and I will stop earning fees. Um, this time I'm going to keep it at three items and zero to liquidity, but you could always change that to 2.5 if you wanted to chop and change uh, or change that to two. But we, I want uh, to keep this as liquidity, uh, all of it as liquidity. So I'm going to say next and create that position. So this is just a tighter range, which means that uh, the price impact will be less while people are buying and selling between that amount. So people will be able to buy more Azukis without the price going too far down. Uh, less approvals that time as well, because we always already approved our NFTs. Uh, and I'm going to drop my last two in there as well as a super tight range. So again, liquidity, I'm going to pair 0.3% uh, pool. I'm going to keep as well. And I'm going to choose these two. I'm going to say next. And this time I'm going minus 10% and I'm going to, just put it up to like 50% over as well. So super tight range with my final two Azukis and say next and create that position. Great, now I'm gonna go uh, view positions, uh, which will take us across to our positions. And you can see now I have a total of four positions. Um, the value is 4.66 ETH. Um, I have three positions in the 0.3% pool, and I have one token uh, or one NFT uh, position, um, like an inventory position only. Uh, I can jump into these and chop and change them as well. If I wanted to add more liquidity to it, I can always go back in. I don't have any more liquidity to add to it, but I can always come here and add and change things around if I want to. But that now means that when people come across to the Azuki, you can see here, these are the ones that have gone up. So these are the ones I've just dropped in. And like we said, it's not just when you sell an item into the vaults that they become uh, like an auction item or available as a premium, but also when you add them in there as part of liquidity. 
or inventory, they also become. So again, we can have a look here and you can see like that's that's the price for it at the moment. So if we go back to profile, uh, we can see again, go into your positions. These are all my positions. As you add more positions, they will come up in here. If you add different positions uh, to other collections, then they will come down here as well. Um, you don't have to add positions directly from the collection section. You can also do it directly from here. You just pick which vault you want to put an item into, or you can also do it from the sidebar here, create a new position. Same thing, it'll pop up, ask you what you want to provide and allow you uh, to do that as well. Good luck with that. If you have any questions, we have a Discord link here on the left. We have our docs link here as well that you can go and read about V3. And we also have a feedback link here if you feel like dropping some feedback into our candy board, specifically about V3, whether it's a bug or something you would like to see changed or a new feature that you would like to see added in the future. Uh, we will come back and have a look at closing down some positions uh, in one of our next tutorials and how fees are getting paid out. But until then, good luck and happy liquidity providing.